Number five, referring to figure 23.58, what are the directions of the currents in coils one, two, and three? Assume the coils are lying in the plane of the circuit, letter A, when the switch is first closed. So here's the switch. When that switch is brought down and it closes, there is uh, a current that is able to flow from positive to negative. Okay, now that direction will be important. So here now we have a current flowing up. This now part is flowing to the left. And uh, it's passing through like this solenoid thing. And I think this is supposed to be like this darker part is supposed to be the point, you know, closer to you. And then it goes to the back and then it coils back around. And this darker point is then in the front, etc. The picture really isn't that good. And if you if you differ uh, in, in opinion, I wouldn't necessarily argue with you. Uh, I just I, I can't tell from this picture which actual direction it is. So I'm just making an assumption. In any case, then, uh, what's going to happen is if you're if we assume that's the case and you're an observer from the right-hand side looking to the left, what that means is that the coil then, the, or excuse me, the current here in this coil will be going in a counterclockwise fashion, okay? Counterclockwise. Now, that might not even be important for the problem, but that's what I'm going to do, okay? So I'm just going to assume it's going counterclockwise when viewed from the right, okay? All right, so now obviously when viewed then from the opposite side now, if you were to view it from the left-hand side looking to the right, it would be clockwise, but anyway. All right, it's gonna then continue on over. Now it's traveling downward at that particular loop, and then finally it'll go to the negative. All right, so now remember they said when the switch is just closed, so initially, there is no magnetic field that is flowing through coil number two. So therefore, there's no magnetic flux, okay? Um, and no changing, you know, no induced EMF. Just keep in mind, by the way, these two formulas are what are, what are controlling, you know, these, these two problems. In other words, this is the EMF that is induced in a coil. And the only way this EMF is induced in a coil is if there is a changing magnetic flux, okay? Per some unit of time. So um, remember that EMF is, you know, EMF is the same thing as voltage and voltage is equal to IR. So this is actually just cancel that out and there's our current. So when this is some non-zero value, then we have some non-zero value for the left-hand side as well. And therefore we have some current, okay, that's induced in the coil. Now this changing magnetic flux comes right from this formula up here. So in other words, the only way this magnetic flux can change is if either the magnetic field strength changes through the wire, or the area of the wire changes, or the, the angle between the normal of the area and the magnetic field changes. If you're not sure what area is, check out, uh, normal is, that is, uh, check out of the area, check out number one. So what I now uh, realize is um, the law now that we're going to apply here is basically Lenz's law, right, that we're talking about this uh, induction effect, okay? So what we're doing is we realize now that as the current here is increasing going up, that means there is a magnetic field that is being produced. Use right-hand rule number two. That's a magnetic field being produced going into the page on the left, on the right, excuse me, and coming out of the page then on the left, right? So here there's all these X's now are increasing, okay? There's going to then be a current that is induced in this loop, all right, such that the uh, magnetic field that is created will oppose the change in flux inside of that coil. So the only way to oppo oppose increasing X's is to produce increasing dots, meaning magnetic fields pointing out of the page, okay, towards you. Now the question is what direction should the current rotate in that coil to produce uh, magnetic fields that come out of the page, right? So your fingers have to coil inside and then there's going to be an external field here of X's, right? So what do you think? So it has to go in a counterclockwise direction, all right? That would be the answer. So if I remove all this, remember this is lying flat. It almost looks oval. I think that it would have been better if they had made this coil like totally circular because this almost looks like you might be looking at it like from the side almost. And that's not what they're telling us here. Assume the coils are lying in the plane of the circuit. Um, so 
I think they meant to say that the plane of the coils are lying in the plane of the circuit, but you know, uh, whatever. <laughs> so what we need to do is um, is write that answer down. So for letter A, letter A here, we're talking about uh, uh, what did I say? Counter, right? Counter clock. All right, why? It's great. Now we know the current here flowing uh, in this particular solenoid is moving in a counterclockwise direction. So what does that mean in terms of now the magnetic field that is produced inside of this solenoid? Uh, what do you think? So you got to apply basically right hand rule number two. All right, check out chapter 22 for that. And uh, what we need to do then is we have to realize then if this is the point, if this, if this part is, you know, pointing out at us and the gray part is the part that's away from us and it's moving in a counterclockwise fashion, that means that your that means that the current the magnetic field should be going to the right. Okay? It should be moving then to the right. So we remember when we're talking about solenoids here. Now I'm assuming that this wire, and by the way, you know, keep this in mind that that should be like a perfect circle. We're not looking at it as if it's, you know, on its side. All right? And and here's the normal to it. I'm assuming that we're talking about it as a circle and the normal is either going to be into the page or out of the page. All right. So the magnetic field here produced by the solenoid is going to wrap itself around, right? It's going to wrap itself around like this. But if you notice, if this is the normal, it's pointing into or out of the, and let me get rid of this. So just pretend that's a perfect circle. If it's pointing into or out, uh, what am I talking about? into or out goodness of the page and then this magnetic field here is basically going to write as review chapter 22 for this that magnetic field then is going to be at a 90 degree angle relative to that normal and since it is at a 90 degree angle the theta now value will be 90 cosine of 90 is zero no magnetic flux there is going to then be no change in magnetic flux because it's still zero and therefore there is no induced current. So the answer here for this one, number three, is none. And the next one, uh, number one, so now we have an increasing uh, current, right, moving downward, right, because the switch was just closed. So that means that according to right hand rule number two, the uh, magnetic field here should be pointing into the page. Okay, do do do, and then it's pointing out of the page on the other side. We're gonna get the same exact answer now for letter A here. Okay, well I don't know why I called that letter. I mean this old letter A, right? The same answer that we got for number two. All right, because it's literally the same thing. There's an increasing X, and therefore there has to be increasing dots and blah 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 blah. All right, so hopefully that well that doesn't make sense. But hopefully my explanation for number two makes sense. It's literally going to be verbatim. So counter. So the answers here are going to be for A. We got one is counter. So I'll just do counterclockwise. Number two is counterclockwise. And then number three is none. Okay, remember, it's all about the assumptions here. And by the way, if you disagree with me on this solenoid, it actually doesn't matter what direction we're even talking about because who cares it's going to be perpendicular to the normal so it really does not matter right your answer is not going to change so now for letter b it says when the switch has been closed for a long time in other words there is no changing current now okay if there's no current that's changing there is no then what do you think there's no changing magnetic flux right because there's no magnetic field that's changing and therefore, the answer would just be literally none for everyone. None. No, no, no currents, nothing. Okay. Now letter C, just after the switch is opened. So now the answers are literally, they're basically going to reverse themselves. Okay. Because now we still have a current going up here. Okay. We still have a current moving up, but it's decreasing. So in other words, what's happening is that we got a whole bunch of X's here. Okay, uh, but the amount of them is now beginning to decrease. So what current will be induced now such that it will increase now the amount of X's? Because we have to oppose the change, right? Take a look at any one of the prior four problems. 
Now, the direction then, what's the direction of the current? Well, it has to be now going in a clockwise fashion, right? If it's going in the clockwise fashion, your thumb is pointing to the right, your fingers would be curling, curling. they'd be coming out of the page on the top and going into the page inside the loop. So literally my answer is just switch. So it's now going to be one is clockwise, two will be clockwise, and three is still none because it's perpendicular. So, all right. So hopefully that makes sense. This one I think is confusing because the picture is really not good. So, you know, if you think it is ordered a different way or whatever, I wouldn't necessarily argue with you, but, you know, please just understand my assumptions. So guys, thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Hopefully this helps. Please help us out if you can by subscribing. We'll see you soon. Take care.